start so um people are slowly joining and i hope they will uh, more people will join us so welcome everybody uh, for joining us uh i'm here to together with stevan and florent uh who will today talk about the podman desktop and maybe simplify the work with containers for you uh so before we start the session i just remind you that uh, you can ask questions in the q a section or if you would like to, at the end of the session, speak up, so you can also request the access and speak up. Uh, and now I will hand it over to Florent and Stevan. Floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Linka, and thanks for the introduction. So today we are here to um, to introduce a new tool that we've been working on uh, around Podman, uh, and uh, it's. It's really cool because Podman expands now to the to the desktop and provide a, a dedicated UI for managing containers and helping you to work with uh, with Kubernetes as well. So it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and we will speak about that during this uh, this session. So local developer environment have become both impractical and the lack of consistency with uh, production environments. There are a lot of complicated uh, setup to get a, a local developer environment up and running. And your laptop naturally has limited resources compared to your production environment. It also lacks of consistency because the way you run the things on your local environment are unlikely going to be the same as the way you will run them live on a uh, production environment, especially if you are targeting Kubernetes. So there are a lot of pieces at work in a production environment that are difficult to reproduce on a developer environment. And there's also a lot of discrepancies between the way containers and composite applications are getting configured to talk between each other. And in fact, who has never tried to configure the network between, between multiple services? So to solve this, a lot of developers ended up uh, using tools like Docker Compose to group applications together. But this brings the worst of both worlds, where the developer needs to translate uh, their application between local and production environment quite oftenly. So on the other, on the other end, uh, on production environment, there's uh, a lot of things that developers must deal with. And there's a lot of things that they need to think about before being able to deploy their application, things like services, routes, but also the connectivity of the services in the context of where you will be using secrets and eventually uh, leveraging managed services as well. So this is also in addition to the cognitive overhead of translating their local application to be ready for production environment. So at Red Hat, we want to um, make the developer experience simple and easy when developers are targeting Kubernetes as a runtime environment. And as developers testing our application on Kubernetes and testing it in an environment which is going to be as close as possible to the one used in production could be a challenge. Even if we have the, common, uh, the, the commonality of the containers, getting them to run on Kubernetes can be a challenge. It's just not as easy as a build and a refresh, and the turnarounds can be very slow. So, uh, so we want to simplify uh, a little bit the onboarding with Padman Desktop, and we want to cover the, the entire spectrum to um, offer a smooth transition between containers and Kubernetes. So, when you are using Docker Desktop, you can start with your containers and they can be translated uh, into pods natively running in Podman. And they can be translated into a Kubernetes pod and they can also be tested uh, into a Kubernetes uh, environment uh, if you want. And that pod can easily be adapted for production uh, for, for Kubernetes. So inside of Podman Desktop, you will find a lot of capabilities that allows you to, to get Podman, but also a Kubernetes uh, distribution. So it install and run anywhere, Windows, Mac, and Linux. It will keep it up to date, your, uh, your Podman uh, environment. You have functionalities for 
um, interacting with your containers, interacting with your, uh, your pods. You can manage multiple container engines as well. You can configure your VPN and proxies uh, if you are working behind a, in a RGAP environment, for example, or if you are working in a secured uh, environment. You also have the ability to configure different image registries, and you can bridge your local environment with remote uh, services uh, as well. So let's see how that works. Uh, so we will do a first demo where uh, we will see a little bit working with uh, with containers, and then we will see uh, a little bit how you can work with Compose and Kubernetes objects. So let me just stop sharing my screen, and then share Podman desktop. So uh, when you arrive on a, on a Podman desktop, you have a, a dashboard, and then you can see all your different containers. You can see your images, your different volumes. You have the ability to configure your different um, uh, settings and preferences for, uh, for, uh, for the tool, so you can define all the things related to the terminal, but also uh, the different uh, preferences for, uh, for your application. You can manage your proxy configuration, for, for example. Um, if I go to the list of images, I can see uh, my uh, usual uh, images, uh, my, my list of images. I can see the history of it. I can inspect it. I can also easily pull an image. So I can pull the hello image for, uh, for Podman. So if I pull it, it will pull my image. And now I can see it here. And I can run it. So when I run my container, I have a lot of different settings um, uh, that I can give to my, uh, to, to my container. I can configure the volume, I can configure the, the ports and the different environment variables, but I also have advanced configurations uh, options as well as networking and security settings. So let's start this container. And when it is running, um, I can see the different logs. Uh, if it's, I can also uh, get uh, different information about my container. Uh, if my container is running, what's interesting is that I can directly get a terminal inside of my, uh, my container. And that's already uh, a lot of different information that I would love to be able to, to get when I am working with container. Um, there is one more thing that I can do uh, as well uh, I can see my different Compose application. So if I start with uh, Compose uh, on my uh, on my source code repository, for example, I can I can see it here, and I can also access to the logs and the terminal of the of the containers. But what is interesting is that if you are targeting Kubernetes, uh, you can also leverage the capabilities of Podman to directly run Kubernetes objects on your uh, local environment. So you can play Kubernetes uh, YAMLs. So here I have just a basic YAML that is um, uh, showing me just running a, an NGNX uh, container. So I can run this one. So it creates a pod which is running within Podman. Uh, where I can see, uh, I can also uh, interact with my pod, see the different uh, information about it, and I can get a Kubernetes YAML, um, and I can eventually just try this Kubernetes YAML onto a Kubernetes uh, environment. So uh, with this, <coughs> 
I can already uh, do uh, quite uh, quite a lot of things. And I'm just going to stop sharing and reshare my slides. Um, stop sharing. And now. Yeah, this one. So <clears throat> that's that's already uh, pretty uh, pretty interesting because I have the ability to run my uh, my images. I can see my containers. I can interact with them very easily. So when I uh, when I am building my application, I can quickly uh, interact with my containers and better work with them. But that uh, is only one side of, uh, of uh, the spectrum. Because when I am targeting Kubernetes or OpenShift, um, I have to move from my local environment to a production environment. And that's where, basically, as developers, we are facing a wall of dis discrepancies. Because the things that we are doing on our local developer environment are very different from what is expected from us when we when the application is going to run onto a Kubernetes uh, cluster. So um, there's a lot of things related to the security constraints, but there's also a lot of things about the way we configure the application to to be to be running as well. So on one side we may be using Compose, and on the other side, we may be uh, expected to provide Kubernetes YAMLs as well. We may need to work with managed services. We may need to use base images that are going to be completely different. So that creates a lot of uh, complexity for, uh, for the developers to move from local developer environment to a Kubernetes environment. So it's a day zero operation, but when once you have your application that is running on Kubernetes and there is something that is happening on Kubernetes uh, and you need to replicate this problem onto your local developer environment, then you also have challenges to reproduce the production workload uh, in your local environment. So uh, I am going to hand it over to Florent to show you um, a little bit how uh, Podman Desktop can help you to more easily transition from containers and from local developer environment to Kubernetes. So these are uh, cool demos that are coming up. Thank you, Stephen. <clears throat> so now I will show you a, a demo of Podman Desktop. And this time, we'll try to deploy an application that exists and based on containers. We'll try to deploy that in a kind cluster. So I have a like Hello World application. It's a, a Python application and a database. And every time that I go to the application. Maybe I can zoom in, but <laughs> it's not so much important. So it's a, I have been seen. So this is the application. It's two containers here. The other one container that we are seeing now is a kind controller plane. It's because now in Panman desktop, we have an experimental support of creating kind cluster. So a kind cluster is allowing you to create a new full Kubernetes cluster on top of Podman. So here I have already started a kind cluster. And here we are able to list all the Kubernetes clusters that I have. And for now I'm connected to my kind cluster. So the first part of the demo is that, okay, we have two containers. If I want to deploy my application, 
to a Kubernetes cluster, maybe I need to package these two containers into a pod. So I will click on this link and Panman Desktop will create a pod from the two containers. So I will have a pod with a Redis database container and a Python uh, container. So here it's a pod from Panman, not a pod from a Kubernetes cluster. So now if I go back in my container list, you can see that my old containers have been stopped and I have a new pod that is running, a Panman pod, with the two containers. And if I try to access the application again, okay, we can see that now it's a new counter because it's a fresh deployment. But now my application is running inside the pod. So now I want to deploy my Podman pod to a Kubernetes pod. So I want to deploy my application running inside Podman to my CAN cluster. So what I can do, I can go to deploy to Kubernetes and here it will deploy to my CAN cluster. I can say, okay, deploy. And now it's deploying my application on top of my kind cluster. So here, if I do kubectl get, sorry. I can see my pod and um, if I try to expose the port. So if I'm, now I'm connected to my pod running inside my Kubernetes cluster and it's still working. I was able to package my two containers inside the Podman cube, Podman, sorry, Podman pod and deploy that to my kind cluster. Now we can, wait, I can do another step is that I may try to deploy this pod to a remote Kubernetes cluster. And for that, I will use uh, Dev Sandbox, which is an OpenShift uh, cluster instance. So I'm already connected. I will just switch my Kubernetes endpoint to the OpenShift endpoint. And we can see here that we have uh, nothing. And I will do the same step. I will do deploy to Kubernetes. And now we can see it will deploy that to uh, OpenShift cluster. I click on deploy. So if I go here, we can see that now a pod is being created. I have some services, I have some routes. And now my pod has been deployed to my OpenShift cluster. And if I click on the link, we can see that now I'm connected to uh, an instance running uh, on a deploy OpenShift cluster. So, and it's available from uh, anyone. Yeah, so this is uh, the last demo. So Panman Desktop uh, is built on Electron framework and we are using some uh, UI framework like Tailwind, CSS and Svelte for the UI. Of course, we're running on Windows, Mac and Linux. On Windows, we are running on top of WSL2, but we have an ongoing work to support Hyper-V directly. And for uh, macOS, we are using QEMU. 
and uh, we are planning to run as well on top of the Apple uh, Hypervisor. And on Linux, of course, it's using the native uh, Padman. We are extensible in Padman Desktop. It means that you can contribute uh, some extension that will enrich your user experience. We are able to deploy some uh, Docker Desktop extension directly inside of Padman Desktop. So for example, the OpenShift uh, extension here is the Docker Desktop extension. But we have our own set of extensions. So we are able to run with Spunman, with Kine, with Lima, with Docker. So if you have the Docker engine uh, running on your computer, in Padman Desktop, we'll display both uh, containers, the one from uh, Padman and the one from uh, Docker. We will be able to deploy um, the containers and pods to an OpenShift local instance. And of course, here are the current contribution points that an extension can contribute to. Uh, yeah, we have one. yeah, so what we have in, uh, in the pipeline uh, at the moment in terms of uh, roadmap, it's uh, continuing the, um, to improve the dashboard that you can see, especially around the onboarding experience. We want to make that very uh, simple and smooth for you when you are uh, installing a Podman desktop for the first time. We want to, to, to make sure that your environment is uh, properly configured. Um, we will continue on the integration of Kubernetes. So the, in the demo that you saw from Florent, uh, there's a support for, uh, for Kind. So this is coming, uh, coming along. It's uh, actually uh, available in, uh, in developer mode if you, if you want to, to give it a try. Um, and we will continue to improve uh, all the flows that help you to transition from containers to pods and all the connectivity of the different containers that you, you may have uh, and uh, enhance the transition from pods to Kubernetes. Uh, Compose uh, is also uh, being uh, uh, available with, uh, with Podman Desktop. So this is something that is uh, also uh, currently work out and uh, there will be some uh, some uh, integration with uh, the Red Hat ecosystem related to OpenShift local. So the way you can get uh, an OpenShift instance uh, set up on your local developer environment and all, as well as uh, integration with uh, the developer sandbox that you saw in the demo from Florent as well, which allows you to basically get um, a free sandbox cluster, Kubernetes cluster uh, uh, on the cloud. So that could be convenient for, uh, for people who want to try uh, their application in a Kubernetes environment which, without having to set up a Kubernetes environment on their local, on their local uh, uh, desktop or laptop. Uh, and uh, long Mid-term, uh, what we have uh, in the pipeline is um, simplifying um, uh, the experience to work with Kubernetes workloads. So um, uh, enabling uh, in easier workflows uh, to, um, to debug um, workloads that are running on uh, Kubernetes. Uh, we also would like to help you transition from Compose to, to Cube because that's something we have been hearing a lot from the community is that there's a lot of developers that are using Compose, but when they have to move to Cube, it's a, it's a little bit challenging. Um, uh, and then uh, we will uh, look at displaying more information for Kubernetes uh, workloads. So we will probably look at uh, creating some, some UI around that. But other than this, um, the roadmap is, uh, is all yours. And tell us what your problems uh, you have when you are working with containers and Kubernetes and what you need to be solved. There's a, 
a lot of activity on the repository. Feel free to ask for feature requests, but also uh, if you are interested uh, to, to contribute, we are always, uh, always happy. Um, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the tool is completely free. It's completely open, completely open source. Um, and uh, yeah, so we, uh, we welcome contributors uh, uh, if you are interested uh, in those kind of tools. And next slide, I think, are some links on the repository. So there's a website where you can find documentation, blog posts around uh, our releases uh, as well. So it's podman-desktop.io. Uh, you will find also uh, good content and materials on podman.io, of course. And if you are willing to contribute and report issues, we have a uh, the repository is under the containers org and uh, it's called podman desktop. So we are looking forward to, to see you there and hearing your feedback. And I think that's it for our presentation. So we may have a little bit of time for a few, few questions. Yeah, thank you both of you. We have a lot of questions in the in the chat, and uh, then uh, or Florent already answered some of them. Uh, but uh, I will just mention, uh, I will just ask uh, one of them, which was uh, not answered. Can we have the logs for the remote API calls? So today, that is not uh, something that we are providing, but uh, it's an interesting feature request. I think we thought about that. We, we have been discussing about that. Uh, but definitely open a, a feature request ticket on uh, the repository, and we will give a look uh, at this. And if you are willing to contribute this, even better. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I see uh, that there is a... Um, micro shift uh, that is coming into the discussion. So this is something that we are uh, looking at, at exploration at the moment. Um, so basically, for those who are not aware, micro shift is, uh, is op open shift for, uh, for edge device devices. Uh, it's a small uh, footprint uh, for, uh, for open shift. And um, we are looking at utilizing this uh, for enabling some of the developer workflows directly from uh, from Podman desktop. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen and Florent. Uh, I'm sorry, but we will need to uh, end the session.